Howdy folks, Dave here at Thunder Mesa Studio, where this week I am once again building a saloon. But this time, it's for the little mining town of Rainbow Ridge. My version of Rainbow Ridge is a pretty faithful reproduction of the little mining town that once stood across the tracks in the load area in the old mine train through Nature's Wonderland attraction. A lot of those structures still survive today in the queue for the Big Thunder Mountain Railroad if you happen to not be old enough to remember the mine train like I am. Unlike the smaller than scale structures at Disneyland, these are designed full size for O scale, but they're in shallow relief, almost flats. Most of them are only about two or three inches deep. In fact, the entire town of False Fronts is designed to lift right off the layout as a single unit so I can take it over to the workbench. All right. And this is the structure I want to work on today, Pat Casey's Last Chance Saloon. And for those of you who have been following the gruesome gulch build, this might look eerily familiar. Dead ringer, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, almost the exact same structure, which is appropriate since I always envisioned Gruesome Gulch as being sort of a dark world version of Rainbow Ridge. But unlike the structures in Gruesome Gulch, the Rainbow Ridge buildings are new and colorful looking, as only Disney Western buildings can be, and uh, that's going to call for a different approach. I'm starting off with a set of the same laser cut parts I used to build the Dead Eye Saloon. These Minwax touch up markers are just perfect for something like this. Now you just go ahead and glue this right onto the back. This is some uh, tight bond carpenter's glue, one of my favorites to use. Remember, you know, if you're building something and one of the parts breaks, it's. <laughs> It's not a big deal. Uh, just think of it as, oh, well, now it's two parts. <laughs> now I want to get a nice even coat of glue on this inner core piece. That just keys in right here. And then it leaves about a sixteenth of an inch on each side for the side walls to key in. All right, let that mess dry for a while. All of these door and window pieces are going to be... Uh, painted white, so I can start assembling those now. And this outer casement just lays over the top. Now each of the butterfly doors gets this delicate outer trim piece. And then each one gets a raised panel. Now the big picture windows just lay the outside frame on top of the inner casement. And I do the same with the upstairs window. On the upstairs window, I want to leave the lower sash a separate piece so I can model it open if I want to. On these cornice pieces, I'm adding some extra 1x2 molding. Well, now I'm ready to get some paint on all of these pieces, and I'm just going to use some rust -Oleum flat white primer. And while the front of the structure is, you know, almost identical, to the Dead Eye Saloon. Uh, the rest of the building is is actually quite different. I had to go back and you know almost completely redesign the entire rest of the structure, even though it's only uh, going to be about one and three quarter inches deep, you know, almost a flat. How do you how do you disguise the fact that the building doesn't have any depth? Disney actually solved this problem for me. I went back and studied uh, a lot of photos. And it turns out what the Imagineers came up with was um, basically a foyer inside, right inside of the uh, Butterfly Saloon doors. There's a there's kind of an entry foyer, and this was a detail that you would often find in these Western saloons. They'd have these open entries with the saloon doors, and then you'd go to the left or right around this kind of partition wall, and it was often very fancy and. Uh, the, the one uh, that I've seen from the photos is pretty fancy. It's got etched glass and everything else, so I'm going to try to replicate that as much as I can. I've cut some parts for it. Now, even though this floor is uh, MDF, not real wood, I can make it look like real wood by adding some grain to it. My razor saw blade. Now, once again, we'll use our... Uh, Minwax Early American Stain. 
Now I figured I should probably make a start on the battens for the board and batten siding. So I've just dropped the doors and windows in. They're not glued in, just kind of sitting in place. So I know how to trim around them with these uh, one by twos. And I'm just going to start at one end and go down the line. It's kind of a tedious process, but uh, I must enjoy it because I keep doing it. Hey, look at that. I went ahead and finished all of the board and batten siding. I kind of got in the groove there and the zone and just decided to do it all now and get it out of the way. One of the things I was really excited about in modeling this uh, partition wall is that in the photos I could see it had actually had etched glass in, uh, in these openings. And so the question becomes, how do we model that? Well, in the past, I've modeled uh, painted windows, and I'm going to model painted windows on, on, on this saloon also with uh, Avery uh, clear labels. Uh, you create the graphics in a graphics program like Photoshop and then reverse them and print them out on this clear film. And then you take the label and adhere it uh, to the back of some acetate. See, this is the matte side. And so then when you turn it over, the, si the shiny glass side faces out. And I'm just going to glue this in place now with some uh, Zap Canopy glue. Another thing these interior windows had, and it was in the front windows too, was uh, what we call diamond paper. And uh, this, this pattern was designed by my friend Jake Johnson for the uh, saloon doors we sold through Crescent Creek Models. And I've got some of it left over. I'm really glad I do because it's perfect for this. Um, you know, he and Jake and I went back and forth a, a few times about was, you know, was the diamond paper a real thing? You know, was it something you really would have seen in the windows of saloons in the, in the real Old West? Or was it a Hollywood invention, you know, just so they could hide the, <laughs> the backdrop and the camera equipment in the background? They just put, you know, this diamond paper in the windows. Uh, we never come up with a satisfactory answer to that question. So, but in the end, it doesn't matter. It looks cool, and uh, it's what we're all used to seeing in Westerns. So, I'm putting it in. And there is the completed interior structure and now before I start putting the exterior walls on I think I want to get a coat of paint on these yeah that's next I'm just gonna brush paint this and the color I want to use is uh, some apple barrel barn red should be just the right shade all right we've got a couple of good coats of that red on the on the visible sides I'm not going to do anything on the back wall here at all because it, it's not going to show. This is going to be right up against the backdrop. Uh, now, I think I'm going to go ahead and glue the uh, side walls into place. And this uh, 1 16th of an inch thick basswood on the exterior when it's laminated to the interior 1 16th of an inch thick MDF walls. Uh, creates walls that are a you know a prototypical thickness of about six inches, which is real nice for O scale. Well, while I wait for all that to dry, I'm going to finish as much of the the front wall here as I can while it's still in the flat. I've got some clear acetate here that I saved from some packaging. Here's the printout of my Avery labels. Got the upstairs window too. There's a graphic for the uh, dentist. It's the dentist's office upstairs. I'm just going to take my Avery labels, take the backing off, use my thumb, use the flat of my thumb to press that down real good. And I can also use a brayer a roller, make sure that's it adhered perfectly. No air bubbles in there. Good, looks good. And I've just put in the outlines of the, the outside of the window casement, just so I can line these up. And it also gives me a, a line to cut. Now I'll just put a thin skin of canopy glue on the back of these window frames. 
flip this over, and this is the bottom, right? Yeah, the wider part of the casement goes at the bottom of the window. And the same thing on the other one. Let's turn it over and check how it looks from the front. That looks pretty good. All right, now the upstairs dentist office window gets the same treatment. I wonder who the dentist is. And once again, looking at uh, photos of the original in Rainbow Ridge, there was that diamond paper and the lower panes of the front window. That's the look we're after. I find it kind of interesting in all of my research on this structure that, uh, I mean, I keep calling it Pat Casey's Last Chance Saloon because that's what it is, but uh, there were no signs on the building anywhere that actually said the word saloon. And I can't help but thinking that that was a conscious choice by Walt in uh, 1950s America. I don't think he wanted to offend anybody's middle class sensibilities, you know, in a family park. Walt wanted his park to be wholesome, as wholesome as possible, and that kind of changed by the time they got to Pirates of the Caribbean. Lots of references to drinking in that uh, attraction, among other types of debauchery. And uh, in all the photos I've seen of this building, this window is always partially open. And the swinging doors. Now I can start uh, building up this elaborate Victorian cornice. really helps define the building. I'll flip this over so I can finish off the dentist's office window. Um, in the photos, it looks like it has uh, curtains in the lower uh, half of the window and then the upper half uh, roll up blinds. So I'm going to model both of those things. Got some white crepe paper, which I'm going to use for the curtains. I'm just taking a piece of one by two, apply glue to both sides. I don't want to flatten out that crepe paper texture. That's the reason we're using it. And then I want to take my scissors and split that right up the middle and we glue it into place. Obviously I made them much longer than they needed to be. It gives me something to glue down here. <clears throat> For the blinds in the upper part of the window, I'm just going to use some manila file folder paper, but I'm coloring it dark green with a sharpie. Once again, a little dab of glue on each side. There we go. And now I can glue the front onto the back. Now I should be able to slide this in, the rafters into the notches, and clamp it with my fingers for a while until that glue sets up. Now I can finish up these corners with some uh, one by six trim. Now I'm building up the rest of the cornice. Got some uh, 1 16th of an inch thick lumber right here. And these pieces that overlap at the corners need to be cut out to get a proper fit. Now I'll put a 1 32nd of an inch thick piece up on the very top to kind of crown it off. This Vallejo white is a good match, but it's going to take a couple of coats, I think. Now just get a couple of window sills to put in. And we will be in the home stretch. Now I'm to the point where I'm ready to add some lighting to the structure. and <laughs> I'm a little nervous about it because I want to uh, have a light underneath the front porch here, a flickering yellow LED to represent kerosene light. And that means I've got to drill some holes through my pretty false front that I just finished. So this is just a 1 16th uh, drill bit and 
I'm using it like a twist drill. This light is going to be hidden up underneath the porch roof. So all you'll see is the glow of it. All right, now I can put these uh, remaining rafters and ridge pole in. Success. Now I figure the saloon would be one of the most brightly lit places in town. So I'm going to illuminate it with a pair of uh, three millimeter warm white LEDs. And they're both going to be mounted onto this back wall using some uh, industrial strength 3M sticky tape for that. Right about there, I think. Yeah. There we go. Run all the reds to the reds. And then we do all the black wires to all the black wires. I want to keep the uh, positives and negatives straight on LEDs or they will not function properly or at all. I'll just use some black gaffers tape on the back of the structure. Keep the wiring all nice and tidy. Hey, it all works. Now I've cut some uh, 8x8s. Uh, to create a foundation for the structure and a support for the front porch, which is going to get built next. And these are just going to run all the way back under the structure and also under the porch. And I'll just kind of box this in with a piece under here, get a piece across the front. Now I can glue on this laser cut piece of uh, 1 16th inch basswood for the uh, for the porch itself one more piece across the back now the porch roof uh, is board and batten uh, basically board and batten painted a dark brown not shingles and these little angle pieces go on each end Now this front beam goes on and it fits into a little notch there. I'm going to brace that just a little more with a piece of 6x8 back here. And on top of that we get this laser cut piece which will receive the, uh, the porch posts as they come up, these 6x6 porch posts. And once it's all painted on here it'll just look like a piece of molding on the front. I'm just using some regular old 6x6 for the porch posts but I'm dressing them up a little bit with some extra details. First, each one gets sort of this block down at the bottom. And then each one gets a couple of little moldings. And these are just squares. Just slide those down on there and glue them in place. One about two feet from the bottom and a slightly narrower one. Goes about a foot from the top. And these will all get painted white before they're installed in their spots on the porch. All right, a piece of this uh, double sticks tough on here so that that. Uh, LED will stay up underneath the porch where I want it. In you go. Those all lined up. That's how we do it in Rainbow Ridge, folks. And now I can put the roof panels on. And these are just some that I cut from some uh, 1 of an inch thick chipboard makes pretty good roofing material well it's not a very big roof so this next step shouldn't take too terribly long these are some um, laser cut peel and stick shingles that i've got these are left over from an earlier project 
These were made by Crescent Creek Models. And before you ask, I'm afraid no, you can't get them from them anymore, but you can get a, similar products from a lot of other manufacturers out there. I'm just finishing up the roof with uh, a row of cap shingles up on the top. And I've also added a uh, smoke jack. This is a white metal casting from Weissman Model Services, which uh, very closely matches what I've seen in photos of the original. Uh, now these, uh, these cedar shingles have been stained, but uh, they're still a little bit too light for my taste. So I'm going to go back and darken them up just a little bit. They look a little bit too new and pristine. And I've got one of these uh, smoke and mirror solutions. This is from Wild West Scale Models. These are basically just diluted uh, acrylic washes. And I like to dilute them a little bit more for something like this. And I can just take and uh, brush this right over the shingles. And darken them up just a shade. And all of this uh, white trim is also looking very clean and pristine. A little too clean and pristine for me, even for a Disney structure. So I'm using some uh, Wild West Smoke and Mirrors Taupe number 10. Just a very light wash. Let it soak in. If it gets too heavy, you can come back with a dry paintbrush and just kind of lift it off. I just want to get the look of just a little bit of, you know, old western grime same thing on all of these porch posts window frames and the saloon doors you get all that white trim just a subtle patina is what we're after and once again i want to give a, a shout out to uh to websites like uh, davelandweb.com and uh, blogs like uh, gorillas don't blog and matterhorn where I've been able to find a lot of uh, old reference photos uh, from back in the day when this structure was still standing. And uh, this one I found on Matterhorn's uh, blog, great, uh, almost a three-quarter view of the saloon, very unusual view. Most people photograph it uh, straight on. The great thing about this one is it shows me the dentist sign up here that juts out. And also there's another, there's a gold tooth hanging up next to the window and I'm going to try and model both of those little details. And wouldn't you know it, as it turns out, the dentist in Rainbow Ridge was none other than Doc Holliday. John Henry Holliday. At least uh, that's what the sign by the window said. Dr. Holliday, dentist. Which I think was a great little Easter egg put up there by the Imagineers for those who would bother to look up in that direction. So I created a little sign to stick out by the window. This is some heavy uh, matte photo paper. So I printed out two signs and they're joined together and then I can just fold it over to make a thicker sign that's two-sided. And then that gets glued on to a little piece of one by two that I'll use to mount it to the building. For the gold tooth next to the window, well that took a little bit more doing. Uh, I carved this out of some high-density balsa foam and mounted it on a piece of copper wire. And now I'm just drilling a little hole right up here next to the upstairs window to mount this on the structure. And signs like this, you know, big old teeth or a uh, big cowboy boot you would see outside of a leather shop, those were for people who couldn't read. Not everybody could read back in the 19th century. Put a dab of cyanoacrylate on the end of this wire. I should be able to just put it in the hole here. Dr. Holliday will see you now. For the main marquee of the building, I was fortunate to find an old photo that showed it very clearly, taken from almost, you know, straight on. I just had to do a little bit of tweaking in Photoshop, but this is one of the very few times doing one of these structures that I didn't have to uh, totally recreate the graphic from scratch. This is the act. This is a photo of the actual sign that was on the building, and the idea is I'm going to cut it out and mount it to this piece of laser board, and then I have a separate piece 
of laser board trim that will lay over the top. Now take the same shade of green that I used on the frame and go all the way around the outside edge of the sign. Make sure everything matches up nicely. The original had a few bills and posters on the side walls. Over on this side, I've got a this is a Frontierland poster from the earliest days of the park. A little classic Billy the Kid wanted poster. Now here's something that definitely was not on the building, but it's my version of Rainbow Ridge, so I can do what I want. <laughs> this is an A frame sign for Pepsi Cola's Golden Horseshoe Review which was actually right across the path over there in Frontierland. Well, as I mentioned, the whole town of Rainbow Ridge is being built as, you know, basically one unit. So I'm going to go ahead and attach the saloon to the building next door, which is uh, the newspaper office, the Rainbow Ridge Clarion that I built uh, a couple years ago. And I've got some resin castings of some barrels. I've also gone ahead and wired the structures together in the back because they're all on the same circuit. And now, without any further ado, I think we can take this over to the layout. There we go. Down into the scene. Now eventually I'll cut a whole new base for the entire town here, probably out of some uh, MDF, but for now, I think that's going to have to do. That was a lot of fun. And you know, it was a lot of fun building two very similar structures kind of back to back. Uh, the Gruesome Gulch Saloon and the one here in Rainbow Ridge. And if you get anything out of this, I hope it's that there's more than one way to skin a cat, or in this case, a saloon. You know, you can make two very different structures from the same set of parts, uh, depending on the approach you take and the aesthetic that you choose for them. Seeing the saloon finished over here in Rainbow Ridge brings back a lot of happy childhood memories for me of the mine train through nature's wonderland, and I hope it does for you too if you were uh, lucky enough to be around when that was still at Disneyland. It makes me want to jump in and finish the rest of the Rainbow Ridge structures, but that's going to do it for today. All of those projects are going to have to wait for another day. Until next time, I want to thank you all for watching. Uh, you know, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and share this video with your friends if you'd like to see more. And you can also follow Thunder Mesa over on Instagram at thunder.mesa and see all that's new on the Thunder Mesa Studio website at thundermesa.studio. And if you really like what we're doing here at the channel and would like to show your support, you can head on over to patreon.com slash thundermesa, like these nice folks did, and show your support there. Until next time, Keep moving forward, my friends, and adios for now. Wait, just one more quick thing before you go. I wanted to let you know that many of the uh, laser cut parts and details that you see used in my builds are actually available exclusively to Thunder Mesa Studio members. And you can find out more about that again at patreon.com slash thundermesa. See you next time.